Hey guys, Nick here. Today we're going to be going through a video on how to use the column expression nodes within NIME or what make what might make more sense is how to use conditional math within NIME because that's what the column expression node is in my opinion. So by the time this video uploads, I think it will be the early, the, maybe the first week of October uh, when I look at the, the schedule of what videos I have scheduled to upload. Um, but today is Labor Day. Uh, I just want to hope or wish you guys or hope you guys all had a, a good Labor Day weekend. Hope you spent it with your family, with your loved ones. You got some rest, you got some recovery, and you had time to recharge. Um, but we're going to get into it today. I already spent time with, with my loved ones, my family, my girlfriend, my little puppies, uh, everyone. So I think it's time to get into uh, some nine to spend some time with you guys. So anyways, this video today is uh, actually going to be uh, one of my favorites because the column expression node to me was like a game changer when I started using NIME. Uh, the reason for that is that the column expression is really where you take a bunch of data and you actually apply logic to the data, right? So you can almost start like, um, in a sense, modeling, right? You can take take a bunch of columns and you can say if there's a particular condition that's met based off of A, B, C, D and so on then I want the outcome to be X right or if the condition is A, B, D, E and F then I want the condition to be X2 or the output to be X2 so the, the column expression to me is what was like wow this is like a <laughs> this is literally like a game changer um, you go from taking data and manipulating it and cleaning it up what what we've done in all these earlier videos and now you almost take like a an actual piece of excel or where excel shines is like you start making conditional outputs based off of what the data shows right so that's what we're going to get into today uh not only that i think this is my first video where i actually show myself on the webcam of my nice little novo yoga so I hope you guys now can put a face to the to the voice. I'm um, gonna try to put my face on a few more videos just so you guys get or feel more familiar with me. Um, but I'm Nick. But anyways, that's enough of the intro. I think we're like two minutes and a half deep. That's uh, not good for uh, my metrics according to what I was just watching on my analytics dashboard. But anyways, let's get into it, guys. So we're gonna continue with the data set from a previous video. The previous video that's gonna be uploaded before this one where we looked at how you can remove the time from a date field so if you have like a date that says January 3rd 2021 and then it has a time attached to it let's say 3 30 p.m. or whatever it is in that video we show you how to remove the time and then we also show you how to calculate the days weeks or months difference between two different date fields alright so we're gonna use that same data set we ran that manipulation here right this is all manipulation so far the data set we've got actually is shows the SKU, the category the description of the SKU, and then it shows that the everyday retail price the MSRP then it shows a field with our promotional discount rate uh, this loyalty customer rate I'm not I don't think we're gonna really gonna use it I added it just in case but I think what's gonna be more important is this week supply field because we're talking promotions and then we have the dates, the actual date. Uh, I'm not sure how it's really relevant, um, but let's say this is a date they set up a, a promo or whatever. And then the last promo date for the particular item. And then in the previous video, we showed you how to calculate the days between the dates. So we can effectively come up with a field that says, this is how many days have been between the current promotion and then the previous promotion that was ran, right? In the retail world, you you don't want to continually promote things uh, because you don't want to get people used to, or the thought is you don't want to get them used to the the continual discounts, or they wait for the the discount to buy. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna use a column expression to show how we can calculate based off of the the MSRP, the discount rate, and the weeks of supply how we can how we can calculate uh, the promotional price. We're going to use the weeks of supply as well as the day since last promo to to come up with an output that says as long as these as long as you meet favorable thresholds of the week supply 
and the day since last promo, then we'll calculate a promotional discount price. If not, we want to revert to the everyday price, the MSRP. So we'll get into that first. We'll do um, what we want to do is a little bit of cleanup. We're going to say this day since last promo. Uh, you can see this large value here. That's due to this date field being technically a zero in Excel in the source data. So this, we know this absurd number of days, 44,000, right? Divided by 365 for a year is, we know is not a real number. So the first step is to clean this up. And we're going to say, take these absurd numbers, which we know aren't real dates. There wasn't a real promo date previously. I'm going to take this and we're going to convert it to a zero. After that, we're going to do the first basic when it, basic calculation, which says if there's a promo rate, then give me the promo effective price given that promo rate. Otherwise, give me the MSRP. And then the third step is to get a bit more technical with it. If there's a promo rate, right, and we have more than four weeks supply, then give me the promo affected price otherwise just give me the msrp so those are the the three outcomes we want to come up with so let's get started so to start off conditional math you want to go into your node repository and look up the column expressions node right so for what i found right you can type in column e and then start ex spelling out expressions just a pro tip if you just type ex expressions oh no exp expressions is right there right and then expr column expressions so you don't have to type column and then exp so just a pro tip when you're trying to save time and you're trying to move quick right anyways we'll drag over the node we're gonna set it up or configure it so double click and so here you have a few options you've got this plus so the plus is where you add in a new expression or a new um, call it conditional math and with once you once you set up to add a new expression you've got these fields you've got to fill out so what I always do first is the output column name so what we're gonna do here is um, you can type in if you if if you want to add a new column you type in the new column name in here so you could do like promo price right which is gonna be our second step but you also have the option to take a column and run conditional math and replace the output of it. So if you just click replace column, now this output column name becomes a list of the current columns within your data set or within your table. So what we're gonna do is, since our goal is to take the values, the, the day since last promo that are absurdly high that we know aren't real, we want those to be replaced with zero. So we're gonna say replace column and what we're replacing is the day since last promo, right? So now, once you do a replace column, you don't really have to set up this type anymore because you're just replacing with the same type. And the type is already a number. Um, so don't have to worry about that. The expression over here, this gets filled out when you're typing in your code over here in this expressions editor window. All right, and then the collection, I actually haven't messed around with this too much, so I, I can't really tell you like what it means. Um, because I, I honestly, I don't know. Um, but if you, if you go over here to this little window and click descriptions, it'll tell you exactly what the collections is. Well, it doesn't seem too helpful here. If check the defined output column will be a collection of the select type. <laughs> don't really know what that means. Never tried it, but I mean, if, if you're interested, you can go ahead and try and then drop a comment or make your own video and then, you know, give us a shout out and be like, I figured it out. I got it, Nick. You were too slow, but I'm not. But anyways, let's move on. So we're going to do this replace column for days since last promo. And within here, you set up your, your code or your syntax, whatever you want to call it, to do the, the, the conditional math. Um, so everything that's within this expression editor is based off of JavaScript. I think it's 8.0 from when I was like 
or when I first started using this, I started researching it. I think it's JavaScript 8.0. So whenever you want to search like syntax things, it's always like JavaScript 8.0. That's how I like searching Google. But just to save you guys some time on the basics, we're going to run with an if. So we're going to say if, and then this column button lets you select the column you're working with all you have to do is double click right so our condition is going to be if the day since last promo is greater than let's call it let's call 365 days 365 days to a year let's say screw the uh, leap years so we'll say 365 times let's say just eight years 2900 so if we go with 3000 days that's more than eight years right more than eight years ago let's say we're not working with data more than even five years old right now at this point so we'll run with if if this column day since last promo and I'll double click and it gets brought down into the expression editor so this is how you delineate a column column parentheses and then um, the quotes with the column name so if the column day since last promo is greater than what was our math let's say a flat 3,000 days if it's greater than 3,000 then we know that this not real this is just a, a function of there was a zero date in our source data so that's why the days are calculating so high so you've got this if column days greater than 3,000 then you do a squiggly open and close and we're going to say if that's the case then this is the output we want we want a zero and now the else if that's not the case just give me what's already in there the day since last promo right so you can see we had the squiggly red lines whenever it, it, there was an error right like let's remove this squiggly because you didn't close the end of the statement you get the squiggly red line that tells you something's going on, right? And it says right there, if you hover enough, missing column brace. So we add that back in, and then you get rid of the squigglies. That's how you know your syntax is good. Uh, you can also hit this evaluate to test it. So it'll evaluate or test your syntax against the first row, whatever's in the first row. So if the first row of our data has shows that the day since last promo is greater than 3,000, then we'll see a zero over here in the evaluate output. Otherwise, we're going to see the days since the last promo, which would be something less than 3,000, right? So we'll hit evaluate. So we see 65. So when we open the data set back up in the first row, we should see 65 days in the days since last promo column, All right? So now what we'll do is we'll hit apply. We know our syntax is good. It comes up with an output we're replacing the current column so we'll hit apply and now we'll right click and execute so first we'll open up our previous output so this is where you see first off there's a 65 right so we're good that matches that evaluate that we hit now we've got these dates here these are where Excel the Excel value of zero by the way this is what Excel zero date looks like 1899 1231 so you know it's not realistic right but when you calculate the difference in days between these two columns you get this huge 44,000 number so these 44,000 effectively based off of our current syntax should become zeros so this is the previous output and now let's look at the output based off our column expressions we should see zeros there right look at that that's beautiful that is a column expression in a nutshell and that's just the very basic column expression right if this then that conditional math this is such a game changer like this is where nine takes almost like you've got the data manipulation and transformation from SQL and then you're applying actual um, like conditions right in in a very like easy manner of once you've got the data to to the to the form you like it then you just apply logic across it
this is what to me was crazy. And I know you can do it within SQL, right? With case statements, case one, etc. But to be able to do it this easily against the data table in NIME to me was just like like eye opening. It's just beautiful. So this is the basic column expression. This is basic conditional math where we take conditions that are met and we apply a, 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 a basic math to it. We're here, yeah, we just made it a zero. We're not doing any multiplication, addition, transformation of it, right? Other than making it a zero. But in the next video, we'll get into steps two and three because I realize we're actually going pretty far into this video as far as length. The next video hopefully will be much quicker, uh, but I got to break it up now, given we're 16 minutes deep almost. So pay pay attention to the next video. We're going to do some math where we say um, if something's present, then do that. And then if something is present and another condition is met, do that. All right? Column expressions, conditional math. This is where, to me, the beauty and the logic of NIME as far as reporting and an, more so reporting and not analysis, right? Because here it's more like modeling and the present versus looking back at the past and understanding what happened, which would be analysis on my end, on my point of view. But anyways, I'm rambling. Stay tuned for the next video, guys. Um, drop any comments, any questions, uh, as long as they're not too complex. As far as like, well, how do you do the an and and an or, or an or? That's in the next video, but if you've still got questions on on this first go, just drop a comment. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Like always, guys, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date so you get the notification on that next video. And then share this with all your analyst friends and all your buddies that um, are into reporting and that use Excel heavily. Uh, Nime is honestly, in my opinion the future. Excel will never go away because the flexibility of on the fly modeling is is really especially when you work with C suite is you you need to have that. But for the analyst that's in the weeds, Nime is like a powerhouse. It's Excel on steroids. So share this with your friends. Um yeah, that's really it. I'll catch you guys on the next video.